away on her neck muscles. Um, we have the rectus capitis, which starts up here, and that goes on the top of her cervical spine all the way down. Then we also have the multifidus cervicus. We have a little bit of tension in there. I can feel that. I'm going to use this gua sha tool to really get um, somewhere with the fascia, and then I can get a little deeper into the muscles there. Um, that multifidus cervicus is the one that's kind of like a sausage-like movement around, wraps around underneath the um, cervical spine. So that's a one that a lot of times horses will carry tension in and you won't even really realize it until you start working on there and, and some of that tension there. And then it also goes down into these pectoral muscles and into the omohyoid and then to the brachialis. So, and it's underneath. And again, this big one that covers that cervical spine is the brachiocephalicus muscle. And they all connect down here, go down to the pectorals. And if we have some issues there and some tension, we have um, lack of mobility and freedom through the neck as well as through the front legs. So we don't want that. I'm just going to start working. This gua sha tool is super helpful. It gives me a lot more pressure. It's a new one that I have, so I'm really excited to use it. So I'm looking for some kind of crunchy, kind of feeling in the fascia. She's feeling it, but I'm not feeling too much of that, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. It just means right there, there's that little bit of um, tension in that muscle right there, that brachiocephalicus. So really want to get that, all oh, that junk out. Ooh, he's a good girl. Aren't you just the best? You're just the best. There we go. Good girl. And then I'm going to go underneath because I did feel some of that um, tension in the multifidus cervicus. So I'm just going to feel around, palpate a little bit, see if we can get there. There we go. See, it's already releasing a lot just from using this gua sha tool because that breaks up some of that fascia, which the fascia is the honeycomb material that goes across all the muscles. We have it as well as horses and dogs and lots of other animals, probably everyone. So that fascia can get all bunched up and it can give us issues. So right here, we're working on this um, near the omohyoid and then that pectoral muscles coming right in there. Wanna get a little deeper. She's feeling that. But she's also allowing me to do it. So she's not saying no, which is awesome. Good girl. Oh, okay, now I'm gonna relax that. A little open up with my hand. Get that blood flowing in there. You're such a good girl. Let's see if she'll step up. But I'm not gonna ask her to, I'm just watching and seeing it what she will do. If she feels comfortable in this position, then she can stay in this position. That's fine. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> you don't have to stand like that anymore, sweetheart. <laughs> oh man. So I'm just gonna dig a little deeper. We have that splenius muscle that comes down here. We have our rhomboid muscles. We have our trapezius muscle. That's that, that uh, flat muscle, the shoulder muscle. It lays down flat over the uh, scapula. And then we have our supraspinatus and our infraspinatus and they connect right here. And that's a good junction point that also at every junction, the either the origin of a muscle or the insertion, which is the ending of the muscle, um, will have a Golgi nerve apparatus. And when you press on that Golgi nerve apparatus, you release neuropeptides into the body system, which the neuropeptides I call are the happy hormones. So they just really give a sense of relaxation and open up those muscles even more. See. There was a difference. I pressed on it and she, oh, okay. And then now she's relaxing again. So she's a good girl. Are you the bestest? 
Are you the bestest? So then I'm just going to take a look at the trapezius muscles. And she's definitely liking this. There we go. Oh, oh, was this too, was this too much there? Did you go to sleep there? <laughs> so I'm just going to let her process. Don't want to have a bad time. I want her to be happy and relaxed. And know that I'm not going to be there to hurt her. I'm there to help. So we're going to try this again. Make me have some tension up here in this trapezius. And then that also goes down into that thoracic serratus muscle. That muscle is the one that goes down here. It sort of overlays like this, kind of. <laughs> We also have a serratus, um, the cervical serratus too. So that's a very, very big muscle. Interesting. And all these muscles are layers upon layers of muscles. So we have a superficial, we have a middle, and then we have the deep. So um, I'm just saying quite a few of them. Good girl. When I press on that, I'm going to try that again. A little uncomfortable there in our pectoral. It just means we need to release it a little bit more. Good girl. Good girl. You are, you're so good. You're so good. Now, a lot of times, what I do with the rhomboids, if there's tension up here, is I'll just Kind of pull the mane a little bit. See what they do. She's pretty flexible. I am not worried about her rhomboids at all. Nope. Definitely not. Good little girl. So now I'm going to go to her back muscles. And again, we're working with stifle issues. So the stifle has, um, if, we, if our gluteal muscles are too tight, then we have issues with our stifle, but as well as if our gluteal muscles are too tight, then our back can be tight. So that longissimus dorsi and the latissimus dorsi in the iliocostal muscles all can get pretty blocked up as a result of having tight glutes. So I'm working on these muscles just to really open up and release some of that tension. And as soon as I press right here, she, you know, moved her leg a little bit more. So all of those things, like I pay attention to everything that she does, whether it be through her face and her neck or her hind end. So I'm going to be watching that as we go along in this video and hopefully I'll be able to point it out. So I'm going to work on this back, really warm these muscles up. We also have these intercoastal muscles that go in between the ribs. If you have tight muscles in the ribs, think about how difficult it is to breathe well. So, same goes for the horse. Intercoastal muscles right here are the ones that um, help with their breathing. If we have tension in there, it might even feel like a rib is pushed out of place. So when you release that muscle, the rib aligns itself again. So, as a wrap up, this is Mel Hitchcock with Mel's Equestrian Services. I love to help you and your horse succeed through equine massage, professional body clipping, and dressage training. You can find me on my website at melsequestrianservices.com as well as Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Mel's Equestrian Services. I hope you take a look and have a wonderful day.